Hello guys. So in this video, let's actually try to understand streaming in depth. So in the past few videos, we did use, uh, you know, streaming here and there, but we never really deep dived into it to an extent where we can actually build, you know, uh, production grade applications. So I'll tell you what I mean. So this is an application that we are going to be building uh, for the final capstone project. So uh, I've called it perplexity 2.0 because we are sort of mimicking what perplexity does in their UI wherein you know if I were to ask something like uh, or let me just say hi I'm Harish in this case it's going to you know stream the tokens so you can see that as and when the words are generated by the LLM all these tokens are being streamed to the front end and also you know if I were to ask a question like you know um, what is the current uh, weather in Bangalore let's say so in this case, you can actually see all of the tool calls that are being done. So you can see that it's searching the web. It's uh, This is the query that the LLM has suggested uh, to the Tavali search. And then this is the response of the Tavali. It is actually pulling all of the information from these four different uh, websites. And then finally, it's writing the answer, right? So we can actually see that all these different things are being streamed to the front end and we can actually see what the LLM is doing. So the it's, it's very important because you know, just imagine if there is no streaming happening, the user is not going to know what is happening. So for a good 20 seconds, 30 seconds, the user is just going to stare at the screen. So this is exactly what we're going to learn in this particular video. So uh, you can see that if we're building a responsive application for the users, real-time updates are key to keeping them engaged. Common use cases are, you know, workflow progress, right? So we need to get state updates after each graph node is executed, LLM tokens as they're being generated. So that is exactly what we saw right here. And then custom updates, right? So when we talk about streaming in LangGraph, so we have the stream and a stream methods. So the stream and a stream are sync and async methods for streaming back outputs from a graph run. So there are several modes you can specify when calling these methods. So we can say graph.stream. This is actually very similar to how we say graph.invoke, right? So we say graph.stream, we pass in the, uh, the initial state. And then right here, look at this. So right now we pass in values, but uh, the common modes are we can either pass in values. This streams the full value of the state after each step of the graph. And then we also have stream mode updates. So basically this streams the updates to the state after each step of the graph. So let's actually look at a pictorial representation of the difference between stream mode updates and stream mode values. So if we set stream mode updates, we are only going to look at, we are go only going to see what is the value that has been updated. Okay. So we know that the messages, okay. So this is node one, two, three. So in node one, it just updates a. Okay, initially the list would have been empty. So node one just updates A. Okay, node two basically would have appended B to the list. Okay, so that is why we are just seeing B and the node C just appended C to the list. So that is why we are seeing just A, B and C. And when we look at mode values, okay, so after the execution of uh, the first node, we are going to get the entire state at that particular point, which is going to be a list with the item A. And then after the execution of node two, we are going to see the entire state at that particular point and the same thing for node three as well. So let us actually put this in practice. You can see that I have already gone ahead and created a file called stream events. Uh, so right here, you can see that this is going to be the picture that this is something that we've built already, right? So we have the start node and then we have the LLM sitting right in the middle. And then we are just providing one tool, which is going to be in this case, the Tavali search tool and then the tool node. So let's actually go and look at the graph structure. So we have the agent state right here, which is just going to contain the list of messages. We are initializing the Tavali search and then we have the tools list right here. And then we are also, you know, initializing the LLM and then we are initializing the, we are binding the tools with the LLM as well. And now we have the LLM with tools, right? So right here, we are defining the model node. Uh, we are just going to invoke and send in the entire list inside of this. And then the tools router is basically just going to take the last AI message. And then it's going to see if there is any tool calls uh, needed at that particular point. And then if there are any tool calls that the LLM wants to do in that case, it's going to direct the flow to the tool node, uh, node. And for this tool node, we are using the tool node pre-built, um, method class right here, where we are also going to provide the list of tools as well. All right. So we're just connecting all these different things. And finally we have a graph like this, this we have already seen. All right. So everything is looking good. 
So coming down. So in this case, we are actually going to put the stream method to use. So right here, you can see that what I'm doing is I'm saying app.stream and then I'm providing the input. So the input message list is going to be what the first human message is going to be what is the current weather in Bangalore. Okay, so I'm also setting the stream mode to values. So if you remember when we set stream mode to values, so what that is going to do is right after the execution of every single node, it is going to emit an event. Okay, it's going to emit an event. And in that event, we are going to see the entire state at that particular point. So I am looping through the events right here. Okay, so this event is going to be an iterable. It is a generator. So anytime there is an event that is being emitted, that is being yielded from the generator, we are going to get this event right here and we are going to print it down here. So let me actually go ahead and run it and let me show you what it means. All right. So you can see that initially we have this one human message alone. Okay, so that is the only thing that exists. So why are we getting this particular object? We are getting that object because the start node just got executed. So at this particular point, the list only has one human message. And then after the execution of this LLM model, what should be there? There should be two items in the list, right? We have the first human message and then we should have an AI message with an empty content, uh, content field. And then we should have a tool call item because this is a query that requires uh, the LLM to use the tably search tool, right? So in this case, you can see that this is going to be the first item. And then if I come down here, you can see we have an AI message as predicted. The content is not there because we actually have the tool calls, right? So we can actually see the argument here as well that the LLM is uh, suggesting. So it is suggesting, okay, use this particular query current weather in Bangalore, right? So that is all that is present right here. Okay. So it only has two different, okay, it's pretty long, but it only has two items in this particular list right now. So what next, what should be the next thing? Next, the control is going to come to this tool node. This tool node is going to take that query and then it's going to call the tably search tool and that is going to output a tool message. So that is exactly what we see right here. We have the tool message, this is going to be the output. And finally, it's going to come back to the model and then finally there is going to be an A message so that is why, you know, in the last uh, last event that was emitted, the last event that was emitted, here you can see that we would have the final AI message as well. It's going pretty long, but you under, you get the idea. All right, I'm not even going to try at this point. Okay, all right, so great. So we have the AI message right here, right? The current weather in Bangalore is a sunny is sunny with a temperature of thirty point one degrees Celsius, right? So we have four different events that were emitted and each of these events had the full state after the execution of each of those nodes. So I hope that that made sense. We can actually go and we can actually say something like messages right here. And this is, this would probably give you, you know, just the messages alone. Now let's actually go ahead and look at the updates. Okay. So if you remember updates is just going to give you what is that new item that's been added to the list, right? So it is also going to provide you which node actually did the change as well. So let me actually run this and show it to you. So in this case, okay, so you can see that the first change was made by this particular model node and then it updated something. Okay, so it just added this AI message at the very start. Okay, so that is all that we see right here. So this model node just added this AI message and this tool node just added this tool message. And then this again, this model node added this AI message which uh, which has the final answer here. So let's actually take it to the next step. So if you remember what we did in the UI, we didn't just, we were, we are not interested in getting the entire state after the execution of every single node. That's not what we're interested in. We are interested in getting every single token that is being generated by the LLM, right? So that is what we did right here. That is how we can actually achieve this sort of a UI, right? So to help us with that, there is uh, there are other methods, okay? So let's look at that. So let's actually look at some slides as well. So in production applications, we usually want to stream more than the state, right? So in particular, with LLM calls, it is common to stream the tokens as they are generated. So we can do this using the a stream events method, which streams back to uh, events as they happen inside the nodes. Okay, so we are not interested in what happens at the end of the node. We are interested in what happens within the node, right? So each event is a dictionary with a few keys. Okay, so uh, in this case, we are uh, every single event is going to be a dict and it's going to have an event property, name, data, and metadata properties. So the event is going to be, this is going to be the type of event that is being emitted. 
the name is going to be the name of the event data is going to be the data associated with the event and we are also going to have some metadata about which particular node emitted that event as well i hope that makes sense let's actually now go ahead and put this method to use so uh, right here coming down you can see that i have used this particular method right here so i'm going to be using something very simple right here you know uh, message hi how are you we are not going to be using any tool calls at this particular point because we are learning so i'm saying app dot a stream events passing in this input this also takes in two versions okay so we've got version one and version two i'm going to be using the latest version and uh, all that i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, loop through all of the events that are getting emitted and then printing it okay so make sure to use this particular async because this is going to be an asynchronous operation all right so in this case let's actually go ahead and run it and you should be able to see that you know the events are actually getting generated you can see that there's a lot of events that are getting generated we can actually use all these different things and then accordingly we can show it in the ui so right here you can see that we have these are the event types right so these are the event types so on chain start on chain end on chat model stream right okay so uh, on chain end so these are the event types and what we are interested in is the streams the event that are emitted from the llm so these are the things that are emitted from the llm okay so on, on chat model start and then on chat model stream so inside if you if you look at the data that is associated with this on chat model stream you should be able to see in this particular chunk we should be able to see this ai message chunk okay so this is going to be the response so you can see that it is saying hello i am here and ready to help you with any information or questions so this is going to be the response of the llm right you should be able to find all these different tokens that are emitted inside of the data uh, in the in this particular type so if you wanted to uh, we, we can also always use these particular types right we can always use these particular event types and then isolate it and yield it isolate it and send it stream it to the front end uh, so what i mean by that is right here you can see that i am only interested in this particular event called on chat model stream and then i am just going into event data chunk and then i am printing it okay so in this case if i run it it's going to be the same uh, query as well so if i run it you should be able to see just that being printed hello i am just a computer program so i don't have feelings but i am here right so if if you wanted to be in a, a same line this print method also provides this end so right here we can just say uh, we can just give an empty string okay so in this case what's going to happen is uh, it's not going to go to the next line instead it's going to concatenate everything so right here you can you, you would have actually noticed that you know it did not generate word by word and the reason why that happens is because you know it actually this print method by default it's going to you know store some uh, chunks together and only then print it okay so to override that we can actually use this flush true and this is just going to flush uh, everything from the buffer as and when you know some value is actually stored in it so in this case if i actually go ahead and run it you can actually see word by word it is being generated so i hope this makes sense we can actually use these events we can actually use the metadata so if i actually go to the right side okay so inside of the on chat model stream so this is the data this we know we can actually also go to the metadata okay so we have the metadata right here where we also have information about which particular node emitted uh, okay which particular node is responsible for this particular event so in this case the langraph node that is responsible for this event is the model node okay so we can also use this particular name the uh, this particular langraph node and we can also add that in one of our conditions and then yield we can isolate that and yield to the send uh, stream it to the ui okay so it is completely in our control we can actually make use of all these different you know um, properties like event data metadata etc etc so uh, by the end of this course we are going to be actually putting all these different concepts to use and we are going to be building this particular application so i'm pretty excited and i'll see you in the next video